Okay, all right, so our next speaker is CEO and co-founder of Inspect AR and PCB Layout, and he's one of the owners of Royal Circuits and Advanced Assembly. His professional focus is on making PCBs easier and more, afford more affordable through to design, manufacture, assemble, and debug. Prior to his current work, he was an electrical engineer working on EVs at Tesla and lasers at Axon. Uh, right now, He's going to be showing us everything about how to debug a PCB using augmented reality. So please welcome to the Super Conference stage, Mahir Shah. All right. Okay. So I've been instructed to hold the mic, of which, okay, just kind of going free form here. So thanks for coming, everybody. My name is Mahir. I'm the CEO and one of the co-founders over at Inspectar. It's a tool that we built to really fundamentally improve the way that circuit boards are really interacted with and fuel and enable engineers to really deal with their hardware intuitively. Whether or not you design the board and whether or not you're familiar with EDA tools or even the hardware design process, boards become a lot less intimidating and a lot more collaborative and reasonable to actually deal with. So we started and kind of built this tool with the same focus that I kind of just explained. We want to accelerate hardware development, and this is kind of on the tail end of the process. Once the board's been manufactured and it's in your hands, the steps of going through and doing any sort of debug, rework, inspection, assembly, are now a lot easier to do. So here's a quick video kind of giving a rough overview of the tool in action and using augmented reality to kind of interface with your PCBs. But you can pretty much highlight any net layer or component on the board. You get all the metadata in one place, and now you can share that same information with other engineers without having to go and send a bunch of files from your EDA tool and expect everybody to know how to use Altium or Orcad or KiCad or Eagle or whatever, and just more intuitively say, where does this signal go? What's that part? What's pin five? Where does pin five go? Thinking a little more intuitively and less tool-based. So, I mean, just, not necessarily a plug, more just about us. We work with all the EDA tools after I just bashed it. But, uh, and Autodesk has been gracious enough to give us a free office space uh, in San Francisco to kind of build a lot of integrations with Eagle to make it kind of more free and more agnostic uh, EDA-wise. Same with Altium and then Advanced Assembly, kind of one of our partners with uh, getting a lot of early testing. So does this slide resonate with anybody in the room? So when I was designing boards at Tesla and even at Taser, it's like you got 10 different screens on your bench and they all give different pieces of information that while all relevant, they're relevant to different people in the hardware dev process, whether you're a firmware engineer or an EE or a technician. And then if you want to translate this information to everybody or anybody else on your team, that's just another layer of convolution and another place where you can make mistakes and send the wrong file, and to send somebody even a test instruction on, hey, test probe these pads for a particular signal and send me back what your results are on the scope or the DMM, you get an email with like 14 attachments and you don't know what's necessarily referencing what, to put it really simply. And so you could really break that down to be kind of saying that the EE lab experience today is incredibly inefficient, it's expensive, and it's error prone. And because it's also inefficient and slow, you may not catch all the errors and kind of prematurely do a respin. And I'm our family business's board manufacturers, and I can promise you we're not giving you a break if you put a diode backwards. That's another five thousand dollars for the next set of boards, or whatever. So to kind of avoid that, find the problems up front. You want to be able to do things efficiently and quickly and collaboratively, and the tool that we've built allows you to do that. This is probably another slide that resonates with people. I use Microsoft Paint more than Altium when I was an EE because I was taking screenshots of my board layout and sending instructions to other interns and EEs and technicians on the team saying, hey, here's a VIA that's on this signal. Can you put a 10K and a link to DigiKey datasheet? And it's like 30 minutes of a pretty highly paid engineer's time and you're pulling him off and context switching just to get your job done is pretty difficult and it's really inefficient. And then that engineer leaves to go somewhere else and you're like, well, what's going on with this board? So to kind of keep the information thread consistent, you want a tool that allows you to keep all that in one place. So the tool we've built is really what we're dubbing the workbench of the future. All your information in one place from your design tools all the way to your test and measurement tools with your scope, 
logic analyzers, DMMs, et cetera. And uh, you get all the metadata in one place where you can really kind of click on any component more intuitively, what's this IC, pull from DigiKey or wherever, the data sheet, all the components, the pinouts, you don't need to count up pins anymore, where's pin eight, where does pin eight go? Pull the data sheet up right away and just kind of work on your boards in a way more intuitive process than the fragmented nature that it's done today. Um, so this is what kind of are the results of us kind of pushing this into enterprise and with a lot of other people today. And we just launched a free version yesterday that you guys can actually download and use on the Hackaday badge. And Arduino and soon a bunch of boards from Crowd Supply and things like that. So getting brought up on boards and using them is going to become a lot easier. Um, so I wanted to switch the screen and kind of show everybody a live demo of this thing in action. So the lighting's a bit off, so excuse me for that. But can you guys see my screen? OK, so this is an Arduino that I'm actually playing with right now on the, on the desk. So what I've done, I've just selected a couple nets. So in real time, you can overlay any net component or layer at the board at the most basic level and see how things are connected, where can I probe, just kind of more intuitive things like that. Like, for example, if you wanted this, this is a problem that, or something that I have to do way more often than I'd like, but find where the closest ground pad is so I can kind of probe my oscilloscope so I don't have a big loop or whatever, right? So let's say that I wanted to select ground on this board. It's a little slow because it was sharing the screen, but that's kind of interesting, and you can see the whole pad, and you know you could change the opacity to maybe put your finger under and probe, and it'll map. But if you really want to just get a more intuitive sense of what's going on on the board, whether you're a firmware engineer or just somebody playing with hardware for the first time, you can more intuitively just say, show me just exposed copper, show me just pads on the board. And then you can select ground, and that will show you everywhere that there's exposed copper on the board connected to that particular signal. And it maps on the back as well, so I know that those pads over there connect to that signal. And that's kind of, at the core, the most simple way that I can kind of describe what I've just uh, shown you guys. But going through it, you could basically pick any component, see where it is on the board. You could actively search DNI and find all the components that should or should not be on the board, because I know your assembly shop, and I know advanced assembly and these other shops never make a mistake. But when they do, you probably want to catch it before you plug your board in and fry it. And so just a lot of things like that become a lot easier in the test and debug process. You could build out templates, share them with your technicians, and save them, like a board familiarity guide, a board bring up guide. So whether it's 10 years later and somebody's picking up this board at your company, they can immediately just get walk through the board as if the engineer is kind of standing over their shoulder. So the way I can describe another use case out of this is you can ensure that everybody uses your boards exactly as you intend them to, which is very often not the case. So that's really kind of what I had to show you guys. I went through it pretty quick. Um, do you guys have any questions to just throw out? Sure, yeah. Yeah, so right now the platform, the, the, the app actually supports iOS, Android, PC, and Mac. So pretty much everything that you could want. And No, we don't. We actually built it kind of separate, so it doesn't really matter, which is nice. And then as far as EDA tools go, we don't actually even need your design files. We just take the manufacturing outputs, and all that's listed kind of user guide on the website. But basically, whatever you would send to a more advanced board manufacturer, like your IPC files, your Gerber X2, those will work just fine with this. Any other questions? Yeah, sure. No, not right now. Sorry. <laughs> Any other questions? Sure. Yeah, great point. So, yeah, absolutely. So the way it's done is through a really simple 30 second to a minute calibration step. Um, the feed's a little slow, I think, but you guys can see this. So ideally, when you kind of make a login, you'll have a project page with all your different boards on it, and you can have boards set between teams and share calibration sets. For this particular board, you can configure it, whether it's unpopulated, populated, have your different ones. This is a teal Arduino. I know the Arduino guys are in the room. It was like a whole mix-up with the, <laughs> I had the teal one and the blue one, and then a couple with different silk screen overlays in the original files. So playing with that was kind of funny earlier. But you'd basically go in, and you can have a calibration step. Um, it'll be kind of laggy to do it right now. But 
basically it just asks you to take a photo of the board and we have a nice onboarding user guide. It'll make sure you're doing things the right way and the camera's a little lopsided, but that's the, uh, <laughs> now it's gone. <laughs> that's the idea. So excuse me for that. No, okay. And then uh, the last thing, do I, how much time do I have? One minute? Okay, then I'll do this really quickly. Yeah, hey, is this camera working? Okay. So, I'm going to put the mic down and just show and talk less. Can you guys see this? No. No? Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got it on the screen. Oh, on the screen. Okay, well, this is, <laughs> this is the Hackaday badge. If you guys go... So long story short, if you'd like to experience this yourself, you can go to inspectar.com and sign up for the free download and have it on your phone, pre-calibrated, ready to go with an Arduino, Hackaday badge, and soon a bunch of boards from Crowd Supply to help you get up and running in like less than two minutes. And then any feedback you guys have would of course be super, super welcome. So that's all. Thanks, guys.